Monitoring of the shocked patient does not need sophisticated equipment because we have the non-invasive monitoring, which is actually clinical. The clinical monitoring of the shocked patient is by the modified early obstetric warning score. And this is a very important scoring system. This is put forward and tested by the Royal College. And we have here the zero, and the zero marks a normal patient. And then we have abnormalities moving down and moving up the line. And all you do is that you write down, you, 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 you check the temperature, you check the pulse, you check the blood pressure, and you check the APCO score, which is the uh, uh, alert or responding to voice or responding to pain or the patient is unconscious, and the respiratory rate and the urine output. And then you just place the finding on the uh, scorecard. The important thing about the MEOW score or the modified early obstetric warning score is not the score itself. Is when will you start scoring event? You start scoring once there is a shock listing event. So it's not important um, because it's very simple to score. The issue is when will you start scoring? I will start scoring once there is a shock listing event. There is a very important comment here by the Royal College. If the score is more than or equal to four, or if the score scores three in any single item, then prompt treatment of the cause should be established. Did they, did they say resuscitation? No, they said treatment of the cause. So the more severe the general condition, this is the general condition of the patient, the more deteriorated the general condition of the patient, the more that you have to treat the cause. You have to address this now before the patient dies. And we will talk about this in treatment. But I want to keep it in, in mind now that when the score is deteriorated, it is more than four total score, or it is scoring three in any one single item, then you have to go for treatment of the cause. We used to add to this scoring, we also score the capillary filters, the skin signs, and the uh, pulse oximetry, pulse oximetry uh, reading. This is not in the RCUG, this is just our uh, practice. Uh, and actually, the reason that it is not included in the RCUG is that it makes no difference. If you can correctly apply MEOW score, you don't need to add anything except the oximeter uh, reading, and this will be essential if the score is deteriorating, if it is more than or equal to four, or it is three in any single item, then you have to add the pulse oximetry in every reading. And it's simple to make just uh, uh, in the patient's file, we used to put it like this, and then the nurse or the one who is following up the patient just puts the reading in its proper place whenever it is there, and then the total score is scored every time the patient is monitored. How frequent do you monitor a patient? It's up to you. It depends on the patient. You can monitor, you can do the meow score every hour, every half an hour, every 15 minutes, every 10 minutes. It depends on the seriousness and the case of each patient. The invasive monitoring, on the other hand, we have three things. Either you monitor the blood pressure, and this is the invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring, and the good thing about it is that it gives you the mean arterial blood pressure. Mean arterial blood pressure is very important. And by the way, if it's below 65 millimeters mercury, this means that tissues are not perfused well enough. And again, the mean arterial blood pressure is the systolic plus the diastolic plus the diastolic again divided by three. Or you monitor the central venous pressure. It gives you an idea about the fluid load. If it's under load, so you need to give uh, replacement or it's overload you need to withhold the replacement and the normal CVP is 5 to 10 centimeters water or which is equal to 0 to 8 millimeters mercury this is the normal central venous pressure and it is measured by a catheter introduced through the right uh, internal jugular vein into the right atrium so it actually measures the right atrial pressure uh, or you have a pulmonary artery catheter and the pulmonary artery catheter will give you the central venous pressure reading, the pulmonary artery pressure reading, 
and if you need you can uh, also record the pulmonary artery wedge pressure but this is not recorded continuously you have to inflate the balloon and then deflate it and it's a bit risky so we, we, we will settle for the central venous pressure and the pulmonary artery pressure which is important in cases of pulmonary edema or fluid overload. This is the reading of monitors. Now this monitor, for example, doesn't have the pulmonary artery pressure, but it has here the uh, heart rate, which is 104, and the uh, oxygen, which is 100. All lectures are based on Togaville textbook, your one-stop, postgraduate study source, and decision support platform. You have 14-day free full access trial. Follow the link in the description to start your trial. Remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you find this video useful, please like and share. The blood pressure is low. It's 70 over 30, which is a mean arterial blood pressure of 46, and this means that the tissues are not perfused. But the central venous pressure is 9 millimeters per so this is not hypovolemia. The respiratory rate is 24, trying to compensate. This is not hypovolemia. If it's hypovolemia, then the central venous pressure should be low. But since the central venous pressure is okay, this is a case of cardiogenic shock. On the other hand, you have here the heart rate is 86. The blood pressure is almost normal, but the pulmonary artery pressure is high. It's 45 over 24 and the central venous pressure is 14. This is a case of fluid overload. So in cases of fluid overload, you will have a high CVP and a high uh, pulmonary artery pressure. This case, we have the heart rate 89. The blood pressure is uh, 95 over 70. The mean arterial blood pressure is 75, which is okay. The uh, central venous pressure is three. So this is a case of early hypovolemia and in need of uh, resuscitation with fluids and treatment and this is actually our next step what is the treatment of shock patient does it include transfusion let's see 